You're listening to the Eldest Jiry Channel. <laughs> The Double Cross by Dave Stancliffe Performed by Otis Jiry Joe Doblo took a bite out of his cold ham and cheddar cheese sandwich while managing to keep his eyes on the house across the street. It was all a game. Nothing happened all night, and now the sun was slowly crawling into its place in the sky while Joe was chomping down on his sandwich. As he chewed, the front door opened and a man walked out. He swallowed the remainder quickly and straightened up in his seat. Joe was in a new white Nissan robe with windows, tinted black all the way round. The man across the street was checking his mailbox. Joe picked up his camera, rolled down the window, and took a few quick snapshots. For the record. He watched the man walk back into the house while sorting through a pile of mail. Taking out a notepad from the glove department, Joe uh, jotted down some observations. It had been a week now. Each day he waited in another type of car, parked in a different spot, starting down at the end of the street. His daily progress forward eventually aligned him directly across from the house and its inhabitant on the seventh day. Joe picked up his cell phone and called the person who hired me. Hello, Miss Bradley? Yes, the woman on the other end answered impatiently. It's me. I'll drop off my final report and notes to you today. The tone of the voice on the other end softened. So can you give me a brief summary? Your son leads a very quiet life. As far as I can tell, he doesn't have any friends, male or female. He goes to his office every day and is quite punctual. He stopped at the grocery store twice this week and bought food and drink. No alcohol. That's all? He didn't go anywhere at night during the week or this weekend? I know the little bastard is plotting to put me in a retirement home and take my money. She groused. No, I'm, I'm a night owl. Between my partner during the day and myself at night, we've had eyes on his place around the clock as requested. Well, thank you. The money will be transferred to your account this afternoon, as per our usual arrangement. Joe smiled and rolled down the window. Derek Bradley, the object of his wealthy widowed mother's constant scrutiny, came out the front door and walked up to the car. Hey, Joe, he said in a jocular voice, without a worry in the world. Always nice to see you, Derek. Here's a cashier's check. I'll continue to pay you twice as much as my mother in order to gain my privacy. Got to hand it to you, going through the motions for her, just in case. Yeah, you can never be too sure, like I told your mother. Your son leads a quiet life. Joe chuckled. He watched Derek get into his new Cadillac ATS-5 sedan and pull out of the driveway, wondering how long his lucrative business arrangement could last. Private eye business is slow lately, real slow. If it wasn't for his connection to Ms. Bradley and her son, he'd have to tell his partner it was time to close up shop. At least once a month she paid them to spy on her son. He was never really sure why, but he didn't question her about it. Her son, Derek, was a pretty clever fellow himself. He figured out Joe was watching him the first time he staked out his house. Rather than get upset, however, Derek made a counteroffer to protect his privacy. The arrangement was a year old when things started to go bad. Derek, who was in fact a drunk, was starting to become ugly and accused Joe of being a parasite and a lot of worse things. The writing was on the wall, the arrangement was shaky and likely falling apart. 
Joe would have to tell his partner John their cash cow was gone and it was time to retire. Once he made the decision, he felt better. Miss Bradley seemed miffed that he was no longer going to continue with the job, but thanked him for his services and promised a good recommendation should he need one. Feeling relieved, he went to Derek's house a few days later to inform him of his decision to move on. He knocked on the front door. No answer. Without thinking, he tried the doorknob and it opened. Derek, it's me, Joe. Beyond the open entryway, he could see the living room and Derek's body sprawled out on the carpeted floor. His head was twisted at a funny angle. His eyes, open, seemed to accuse Joe of the crime. He turned and ran out of the house. The police came while Joe was waiting for his car to be serviced the next day. They were reading his rights as they escorted him to the police cruiser. On the way to jail, Joe badgered the officers. What'd I do? Like I said, when I read you your rights, you're being charged with the murder of Derek Bradley, who resides at... Joe didn't hear the rest. His mind was racing. What was going on? When they got to the station house, he was escorted into a little room with a table and two chairs. When the detectives came into the room, Joe was still trying to figure out what they knew that incriminated him. He knew he was innocent. How could this have happened? One of the detectives sat down across from him and laid out a folder with photos and notes in it. It was Derek's house. Have you ever been to this house? Yes, but... Did you kill Derek Bradley? No. Wait. You don't understand. I'm a private eye. I was on a case for a client. Did the client hire you to kill Mr. Bradley? No. Of course not. What then? Did you have a grudge against him? No, damn it. Mother hired me to watch him. That's all it was. She just wanted to know what he was doing with his life. The two detectives look at one another. Mr. Doblo, would you like a cup of coffee? We're going to verify your story. It shouldn't take too long. When they returned four hours later, they both looked grim. I want to read something to you, Mr. Doblo. According to this statement, Miss Bradley has been concerned for some time that someone was stalking her son. When these photos were given to her, it was proof that someone knew where he lived and could hurt him at any time. In the statement, she testified you threatened to kill him if she didn't give you a monthly allowance. No! You have it all wrong. I want a lawyer. A mansion in North Hollywood. Ms. Bradley sat back and sipped her tea as she watched the television. Joe's partner walked into the room and sat down next to her. Dear John, she said, whatever would I do without you? 